A friend of mine was telling an acquaintance of his some of his experiences in life and in the gospel, and the friend stopped him and said, wait, you mean there's more? And I think that he was a little surprised and a little bit happy about the fact that there is more to the gospel than he had supposed. And uh, it's interesting that anybody's surprised about the fact that there is more, because that should be obvious to anybody who reads the scriptures. But the fact is, most people don't really read the scriptures as they're intended to be read. Uh, my experience uh, with those who are in the box in the church is they allow other people to read the scriptures for them. Um, they may go to, let, let's say, a, a Christian may go and they'll spend Sunday, uh, you know, 30 minutes with their pastor going through a few chapters of whatever book in the Bible, and that will be explained to them, and they'll come away, um, you know, filled, um, spiritually fed from from church, but not, um, not hungry and not feeling like, wow, I, um, my experience in life is vastly different from um, what God wants me to have. And uh, in the LDS church, we have Come Follow Me, and most people follow along with that um, rigidly. And so the scriptures they read are pretty much exactly the ones that are in the manual, and the questions they ask are pretty much the exact questions that are in the manual, and the answers are pretty much exactly the answers that the, the church wants you to have. So the scriptures themselves as far as books and as far as content, are enormously provocative. They're meant to be. Um, you should have a very different reading scripture than you have with any other book out there. And every time you dive into there, you should you should question reality. You should question your own uh, experience in life and your existence. You should question whether or not you're saved. You should question whether or not you know God, whether you know Jesus. You should question whether you are a good person or not. Um, but, uh, and, and not that you're not that you're not going to get some comfort out of the scriptures cause you definitely will. But if you want to know, uh, directionally where you're supposed to go and what there is for you, your experience coming out of your time reading the scriptures should be one of being, uh, given this, this massive, uh, vision of, of what your potential is and where God wants you to be. And that should never be the case of um, exactly where I am is where God wants me to be. Um, it should be one of lifting you up to a higher level and giving you vision of where you can go in this life. Uh, most people, um, in fact, all religions will tell you that there's this enormous gulf between you and God. And you are um, so far away from God that... And there's this, this gulf that's going to be bridged by Jesus. So everybody acknowledges that there's this enormous gulf. So the when you ask, um, you mean there's more? Well, there's this gulf. So of course there's more. Of course there's tons more. Yeah, but Jesus bridged the gulf and he's gonna he's gonna I'll get my reward in the next life. No, that's that's absolutely not what the scriptures say. Um, Jesus said, come follow me and do my works and even greater works you'll, you'll do. And signs will follow those who believe and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost and you will have uh, the gifts and uh, you'll have gifts of the spirit and there will be miracles and there will be angels. And um, and you're going to be just like the wind, not knowing where it comes or where it, or where it goes, because you're going to be led by God. You're going to be led individually by God and he's going to change you and you're going to have a mighty change of heart and you're going to be a very different person than you are right now. Oh yeah, I've had a mighty change of heart. No, you have not because you're not a mightily different person than you were yesterday or a year ago or 10 years ago or 50 years ago. You're pretty much the same person. And not only that, but I can pretty much predict who you're going to be in a decade, two decades, three decades, or five decades from now. Um, as you know, if you're a Catholic, I can predict um, if you're a good Catholic, I can predict um, what your life's going to be, um, what what your spiritual walk is going to be five years from now. If you're LDS, I can totally predict that as well. Um, for people like, um, let's say, my older relatives that I have, 
Um, you know, a couple dec decades ago, I knew exactly what their their path was going to be when they got older. And right now, their that path is exactly as I thought. Um, you know, it's filled with, you know, a, a senior mission and and going to the temple and you know just being active in the church. That's it. Um, so is this is this are they getting more? Um, or is there some level of, of stagnation? Is there this plateau that we reach where spiritually um, we're not having any more spiritual uh, encounters with God than we were? I mean, maybe you're having a little bit more. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're growing a little bit. Maybe your eyes are open a little bit more. But has that gulf been, um, been bridged? Are you actually walking across that bridge? Because the gulf, the gulf really has been bridged. It's been bridged by Jesus. Um, but we think, well, the gulf's been bridged, and you know that bridge will be crossed in the next life, and God will make of me somebody that um, that deserves to be in His kingdom. Um, even though I didn't really uh, make any progress against that, you know, across that bridge that He that He bridged for me, the gap. Um, that gap, he wants you to, to walk across it. And most people don't want to. Well, why? Because they're in the box, because they're, um, because they're very comfortable um, with the other masses in whatever church they're in. And I don't even care what church you're in because people feel, yeah, they feel like, well, I'm in this special church. And because of that, I am more special than the other people in the other special church. And I have received all the blessings that I need and I'm saved. And uh, so they feel very comfortable in that. Again, if you're not in the scriptures, um, you're never going to get out of that comfort zone. And when I say out of that comfort zone, it's a comfort zone. And at the same time, it should be one of, of you going, oh my gosh, wow, there is, there's more. And I've been given a vision today as I've, I've read the scriptures. God has given me a vision of what's possible. And not only what's possible, but what he expects of me. And uh, he's, he's changed my attitude and increase my faith to the extent that I am going to push forward on that. Now, those who don't question, those who don't look for that, um, there's, they feel comfortable because they're ignorant about where they can go. Now, I was having a conversation with my daughter who's on a mission in Hawaii, and she is currently... Um, preparing to, to leave the mission. She's got less than three months left. And so she told me this earlier this week that she's working on her plan to, to, uh, to, to leave the mission and to transition. So it's kind of a cool thing because when I was on a mission, we had no such plan. We just got off our mission, went home and I found myself in bed in the same house that I had been in, uh, when I was 19 years old and I woke up the next morning and, was, and I felt like I had woken up from a dream and that my mission had never happened. And my habits that I had had, they were really good habits of scripture reading and praying and connecting to God every single day. Well, those habits that I'd had, because I felt like I woke up from a dream, I never established new habits. And so I dropped off a cliff spiritually and really stopped connecting to God. And I got busy with life. And so it was years before... God helped me get back on the path of um, really being in the scriptures. So as I was talking to my daughter, I said, do you ask questions every time you're in the scriptures? And she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, every time you're in the scriptures, you should be, um, God should give, be giving you questions um, about what you read. You should, um, you should always have a, a question. And if you ever come away from your scripture reading um, without a question, you pretty much know that you didn't even read the scriptures. So you should always approach the scriptures with a pencil and you should be writing in the margins. Why does God say this? What does this phrase mean? Why, why was this person able to do this? What, um, you know, why am I not having the same experience? These are the types of things that you should be um, questioning as you're in the scriptures. So the, the, the scripture really do give you the questions. And the cool thing is, every time you find a question in the scripture, you're guaranteed to know that those same scriptures contain answers to those 
exact questions. So you should go in the scriptures looking, number one, for questions, and number two, for answers to those questions. And those will get deeper and deeper and deeper as you read the scriptures. Many people don't like to question things. Um, you know, especially in churches, you're told, well, there's certain things that, that you shouldn't question. Um, that is just not the case with people that want to make progress. Um, you think of anybody who was an inventor or a, a thinker, anybody who made discoveries. And <clears throat> the main thing that all those people have in common is that they were continually questioning uh, life as it was, or, or yet yeah, at the time. And so those who continually question are those who continually get answers and make progress. If you're not questioning, guaranteed you're not getting any answers. And so God loves questions. He really, really loves that. And he loves people who ask those questions. Um, for whatever reason, we believe that a good, uh, a, a good member, a good Mormon, let's say, doesn't ask questions. They just do what they're told. And we're told, you know, obedience is the, is the first law of heaven or something like that. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know where that came from, but um, it's really not. Maybe questioning is um, because... If you're not questioning, if you're not um, boldly able to ask a question and and find answers, then you are, by definition, going to be stagnant. God loves people who question, um, and he's willing to teach people. This is the funny thing. People think that somebody who is meek is somebody who is just obedient and doesn't ask questions. No, a meek is somebody who is willing to acknowledge that they don't know. They're willing to acknowledge that there is more and that they are ignorant and they need to be taught. That's somebody who's meek. Um, but it's not somebody who's just willing to do what they're told because those type of people, they just don't gain understanding. They remain in their, in their ignorance. But a meek person who acknowledges that they're ignorant is continually actually getting more and more. They're continually being fed. So Jesus, parable or the, the Sermon on the Mount, he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, hungering and thirsting, realizing I want more. I need more. My current experiences isn't what um, God expects. I can tell that because I'm, I'm in the scripture and I'm not having the same experience as the men and women of God in the scriptures. And so there is more. And God gave me a vision as I was in the scriptures today of the fact that there is more and what that looks like. And he's asked me to go after it. He wants me to go after that, and he wants me to go after it boldly. So as you're in the scriptures, continually be saying, you should be saying, oh God, you mean there's more, and you rejoice. And just as the parable of the, uh, the man who finds the treasure hidden in a field, and it says, and for joy went out and sold all that he had to purchase it. There is great joy in, uh, in encountering more. Um, for me, the last few years have been one of God showing me um, a little bit more of what I don't have and me at that point saying, okay, well, what do I need to, to do to get that? And me realizing that my current way of living and my current way, my current level of faith is not sufficient to have that. And so me going after that more and more and more and uh, God helping to change uh, my way of thinking, my attitude, and uh, helping me to seize upon that. And then as I go back around through the scriptures, he'll show me something more and more and more and more. And so there's this, there's this interactive uh, thing. If you, you want a vision from God, everybody wants a vision from God. Well, he'll give you a vision if you just go and look in the scriptures and he will show you, um, he will show you with power what you're missing and how to get it. Um, no, I, I don't want that kind of a vision. I want an I want an angel. I want something else. Well, he'll give he'll give you an angel. He'll he'll give you earthly and heavenly angels if you will just ask the right questions. If you will acknowledge that you are missing something. Um, but uh, many people want the angel without being told that uh, that they need to do something different. That there is something that they're missing. Um, that is very uncomfortable. But that's only uncomfortable in the same way that lifting weights is uncomfortable. Um, you know, if you don't want any pain, no pain, no gain. If you don't, if you don't, 
if you want muscle, but you don't want to do the work there, well, there's, there's a little bit of a problem there. Um, in order to get something, you need to acknowledge that you have to do something more than what you're currently doing to get there. So, um, do you mean there's more? There's a lot more. There is so much more. That gulf um, that, that Jesus has bridged for us. Uh, why aren't we walking over the bridge? Why aren't you walking over the bridge? And, you know, have God point the way. And, and he'll do that. He'll do that. There's, there's vastly more than any of us are willing, currently willing to take a hold of.